What's going on guys? Uh, it's Kevin here. Uh, I just decided to hook up my Blue Yeti, so hopefully the audio is not too bad. Uh, I'm here to do my one month uh, wear test review of the Mars Yard GPS. Uh, so if you guys haven't been following my Instagram, kevin.img, I've been posting sporadically over the course of the past month uh, about my experience with the general purpose shoe, general purpose sneaker. Uh, and this is sort of like a formal one month update. And I thought it'd be important to get this video out just because it's planning on restocking in August, if I'm not correct, or if I'm not mistaken, I mean. And also just as a little caveat, sorry if I sound nasally or if I cough or sneeze or if I look terrible. Um, I got sick with COVID after my trip uh, in Europe, but I'm feeling better now. I was planning on doing this video a week ago, but that's when I was like completely out. Uh, so yeah, this is my formal one month review of the general purpose shoe and let me pull them out. So let me list off uh, some stats that I basically made. Uh, I've walked about 1200, 12,000 I mean, sorry about that, 12,000. I've walked 12,000 steps a day on average. I've used them for about 43 minutes of daily exercise each day, five miles of walking slash running average distance each day and went in three different countries, not including the US. Uh, I went to France, uh, the UK, and Italy, uh, and I've had about 190 minutes of standing minutes per day. So uh, this past, I think it was three weeks ago now, uh, I went on like a week and a half trip to uh, like Europe, and these were pretty much the only shoes that I brought. I brought three pairs of shoes. Actually, I brought the ALD uh, loafers, I brought my Kiko Asics, and then these. And honestly, for some reason, in the back of my mind, I felt terrible whenever I put those two shoes on, and then I immediately pretty much switched off to this. Um, I've only worn one other pair of shoes besides this, and that was the ALD loafers, when I wanted a little bit more of like a fancier night. Gave me blistered, started bleeding. <laughs> Not fun. Uh, so I ended up just pretty much wearing these for the entirety of my trip. Uh, so when Tom said uh, to own less and do more, that I pretty much took it to heart and I've pretty much only worn these and created memories with these shoes for the past pretty much month. Uh, I got these on the 20th, 22nd, something like that. And then I've pretty much worn them all the way. Today's the 25th that I am recording this. Um, so this is what the shoe looks like. My use case might be a bit more serious versus other people's. Um, during my normal work day, I do walk around a decent amount. I also do normal desk work. So uh, I work in like a bio lab. So I'm on my feet a lot of the time since I'm in the wet lab, but also another part of the time I am uh, just at my desk doing like data analytics and stuff like that. Uh, so my use case is about that, but this past month I did put them in vigorous use just because of that Europe trip. So in a durability sense, I felt like these held up uh, pretty all right in my daily usage. Uh, I ran in these, I hiked up in these, and I traveled many, many streets in these. Uh, the shoe is pretty durable in terms of the sole. The sole is actually very, very surprisingly sturdy and durable for my part. Um, and actually like one of the biggest improvements that I think could be made to the shoe itself in terms of like durability and build is really swapping out the insoles. I actually swapped out my insoles for a different pair of insoles. Uh, Nike recently released a collaboration with Kashina or Kashina um, on their Air Max one and they came with a cork insole that is also ortholite. So I did swap them out and I kept the original insole in the box. I just wasn't a big fan of the original insole. I get it, there's more cushion in it, um, but I felt like the softer insole of the Casina uh, really did make this a bit more comfortable, in my opinion. Um, the only thing is, is that the, the ortholite insole, because it's so soft, I do feel like there might be some durability issues because the bottom of the insole is already kind of splitting a little bit. Uh, but the cork kind of adds like that aesthetic sort of flair um, as well as gives it that original Tom Sachs sort of vibe 
um, as well as adds comfort. So that's something that I personally have done to make it a little bit more comfortable. Uh, the shoe itself is built all right. Uh, I do think that the build itself was pretty decent. Not too many loose strings, not too many glue stains, but I do think that the shoe itself might have some issues in the near future. So the compliments to the sole, totally great, but the upper is really where I had some issues. I had mentioned before that the fuse material on the upper is a little bit iffy just because of the fact that it might be prone to cracking and 100% it already started to crack. Yeah, like pretty much within the first week of usage, uh, I saw cracking in the upper fuse material uh, as well as just a lot of bends. And I'm not sure about your guys' use case, but for some reason my right foot cracked almost immediately, but my left foot only cracked three weeks and a month in. So um, just might be inconsistencies in the way that I step. Now where I would have probably made a little bit of a change of uh, the fuse material is probably instead of doing fuse, I probably would have done uh, an extra layer of suede, just another suede layer, kind of like how they do it on the Blazer 77, uh, where they have a little bit of like a suede patch. I would much prefer that than the fuse material. Um, sure, I get that it may sacrifice in terms of the lightweightness of the shoe, but I think the shoe itself, the upper does feel quite light in comparison to the bottom or the sole of the unit. I will have to say that the fabric upper is very, very breathable. Um, in Italy, there were some days where it got upwards to 100 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, and that was crazy, crazy hot. And then these shoes, uh, my feet were never sweaty in them. Um, it was always quite durable, especially the tongue itself, as well as the knitted upper. Everything was perfectly fine in terms of that. I didn't come across any like rains really, so I can't speak to the water repellency of the shoe. I do know that they did mention that there's light water repellency, but if you really want to do um, additional water repellency, I'm sure you could add on some like DWR or you can add on some like Crep Patek or whatever sneaker water repellent uh, like solution there is. And I've also mentioned that the comfort of the shoe isn't that great, but it's sort of like you have to kind of blend uh, the two different sides where you have to match the comfort with the durability of it. The shoe, if it were to be made out of like Phylon or certain other softer material, sure, the comfort would have been there, but the durability may have taken like a huge hit. Um, they could have used React or Renew, uh, but it would have also increased the price um, and then maybe increase some other extra factors such as like licensing, etc. I really do think that they did a very nice balancing act in terms of trying to get the shoe down to the $110 that the retail price is supposed to be. Maybe they could have done a polyurethane core and have the hard rubber outer. I've already seen people resole these with a Vibram outsole, which I definitely think this shoe, if anything, the sole will outlive the upper. So that's where I'm kind of conflicted. But uh, let's say your sole does wear out, um, you can definitely replace the sole with a Vibram outsole um, and it'll look perfectly exactly the same pretty much. Uh, my sole hasn't worn down pretty much at all. Uh, like if anything, the small little nubs that are towards the ball of my foot have worn out a little bit, but pretty much everything else is still intact. I also don't heel drag at all pretty much. so. Uh, your use case may vary in terms of the heel area. I do think that there is one drawback, in my opinion, in terms of the comfort uh, of the upper of the material or the upper uh, of the shoe itself. There is only one patch of foam padding and I really do think that it kind of does a disservice to the shoe. I wish there was a little bit more padding, um, slightly higher, um, like maybe make the shoe slightly, slightly higher and add a little bit more uh, I guess, padding on the elevation side, just because the shoe itself, how it's built and the lacing system, um, there's a lot of heel slippage for me. And I have to tie these shoes very, very tightly, pretty much almost all the way in order for the heel slippage and the ankle slippage uh, to not be too much of an issue. Um, I do tie my shoes pretty tight on pretty much like all the shoes that I have, so it's not a big issue. But even when I'm tying them pretty tight, there is still, I don't know, just still a bit of ankle. So I would have liked to see another lace hole, if anything, just one right, I guess, 
on the left of the final lace hole. Um, maybe add a little bit more suede uh, there to accommodate for that extra lace hole. But that would have been great if I could do that. In terms of styling of the shoe, I really do think that this is a very easy shoe to style. Um, it has that sort of norm core type of vibe. So you really can wear this almost like any way that you can, which is kind of great just because this is supposed to be an everyday use case sneaker. Um, and I've had no issues with it um, clashing with things. Uh, I, you can wear it with like military garments. You can wear it with all black. You can wear it with jeans and like a white t-shirt. You really can wear this in all sorts of different types of ways um, and have it still look good just because it's a very simple sneaker. Um, now, that being said, I don't think it'll excel in any sort of, um, I guess, category, if I should even say. I think it'll just look fine and it's not intrusive in any way, just like the Mars Yard. It'll look just fine in every single way, but it won't look like spectacular in any sort of way. The only outfit that I can really think of that like really matches this to the T is really just dark wash pair of jeans, a white t-shirt, and that's like the most basic way. And you'll just pretty much look like every single Tom Sachs guy that you know, and maybe even grow like a mustache here. Um, you'll just look like him basically. So here's some extra, I guess, opinions and thoughts that I had. Um, really the shoe itself, I originally when it was announced, I wasn't a big fan of it. Um, I thought I was fully expecting the 2.5s to release. I was fully expecting maybe the 3.0s to release or something. Um, and for us to get the GPS uh, just kind of felt like uh, like, you know, like pocket sand almost, uh, where we all wanted something and then you came out with something completely different and everyone's like, what the fuck? Um, but I will have to say that I'm pleasantly happy with the shoe. Um, in terms of spending 110, 120, 100, you know, like 20 something plus tax and all that stuff. Um, I really do think that this is probably the best value uh, sneaker that Nike has released in a long time. Um, sure, a lot of people are going to say without the Tom Sachs branding, this would sit, this would hit outlets, you know, like yada yada. Um, and I do think that that would be the case, but even at $110 and it being a normal general release sneaker, I do think that this will far outlive any sort of kill shot or like any sort of kill shot OG, kill shot two, or like anything like that or any sneaker really in this sort of category. Uh, at $110, I do think that the sole is really where um, this shows amazing, I guess, value proposition. I know I keep mentioning that value proposition word, but like really you have to look at this as a $110 sneaker. And um, I do think that there is a bit of marketing when they say it took 10 years to make a sneaker this simple, but I do think it probably took a lot of discussions, arguments to really have Nike, instead of trying to push uh, the envelope and make something more and more like high tech and make something uh, more and more, I guess, special, it probably is a bit odd and a little bit hard to argue to Nike to make something as cheap as a generally sneaker, but release it underneath a special projects or a collaboration idea, as well as Nike's ultimate goal is to sell you more shoes. So it is a little bit counter, I wouldn't say counterintuitive, but like counter their business goals to sell you a durable sneaker for the same price as some of their cheaper outlet sneakers. Um, really, I do think that this is worth 110. This is even worth maybe 150, I would like to say. Um, sure, the materials aren't top notch. This is not gonna compare to a Casina Air Max One, a Travis Scott shoe, or it's not going to compare to like any of those higher quality uh, like Nike sneakers. But this will compare and probably outperform a decent amount of them in terms of wear. Uh, the sole really does do an amazing job, and I think the goal is to use, repair, and reuse. And like ultimately, I do think that they have satisfied those goals. And 
genuinely, I feel like that was one of the biggest issues about the Mars Yard is just because the sole itself, it's an SFB boot sole. So Nike has pretty much stopped making the OG like SFB. Um, there's some still available on eBay and other like outlet stores, um, but pretty much they've stopped that. Although the shoe itself is pretty cool. It has like a free sort of like motion and I thought the look of it was really cool. Uh, they stopped making it and then it's hard to find it. And in order for you to get it, you would have to do a full sole swap. So you have to buy another pair of shoes, pay a customizer or sole swap it yourself and then go through that entire process just to reuse the shoe itself. Now with this, you can just go to um, a cobbler and just get um, a Vibram outsole have the sole uh, like undone, resole it completely, and then you'll be good to go. The only question is how long will the upper withstand? And I genuinely think that the upper will be good enough for maybe a year, uh, and then you'll start seeing some issues. I already see some issues with the fuse, but the fuse isn't the actual like material that I'm worried about really, is really the, the knit material underneath. And it has a very interesting structure. It's not a normal mesh, so I have no idea, as well as uh, like uh, underneath the shoe itself, I didn't notice this really, but there's like an additional layer of nylon backing uh, the mesh material itself. So it's a layer of mesh, and then I'm assuming another thin layer of something, and then a layer of uh, like nylon. So I'll try and do some close up shots of that, but that nylon layer looks pretty durable and it's on the inside of the shoe. So it keeps the aesthetic of like a retro shoe without making it look too new and too like whatever. It still keeps that like heritage uh, like idea of it. Uh, from all the uh, colorways that have been leaked, I personally really like the OG colorway the most and then probably second that yellow color with the red stripes or the red uh, pull tab and um, the ankle strap. Uh, I like those the second but I personally am very looking forward to seeing how these look uh, and feel maybe a year in, six months in. Uh, hopefully they do restock this color one more time just because I, I would like another pair. Uh, I do know that that's kind of counterintuitive, but in the odd case that these shoes break out on me it, like in a year or something like that, I don't want to end up paying 500, 600, 700 dollars for a pair of uh, like ultimately like better versions of Killshot 2s. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much my thoughts about the uh, GPS. I really like it so far, one month in. Uh, please like let me know your guys' thoughts. If you guys have the GPS, let me know what you guys think about it. Um, please let me know uh, what you guys thought about my review or if there's anything that you guys would like me to answer. Uh, my DMs are always open at kevin.img. Um, please do let me know uh, how your guys' experience with the GPS is. I know I've had a few conversations with people where they've also had issues with the fuse material, as well as I've also seen one video where the sole itself started separating within the first few wears. That's completely crazy. My sole's to, like completely fine, and I think that just might be a manufacturing fluke. Uh, so yeah. Thank you guys so much, uh, and I will talk to you guys later. Uh, peace.